even though we are all equal, yeah, some of uh, our brains individually are not the same. Yes, that's why, for example, some people learn quickly, some people learn slowly. Yeah, and uh, so same goes with the spiritual memories. Yeah? Sometimes a brain is capable to extend and to a little further into spiritual realm in order to record the vision and bring it back. Some brains are not able, but that doesn't mean you don't have vision. Anyone who are initiated into this quantum method has light, has sound. That's why sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night or your husband kicks you, you suddenly wake up in the room full of light and it lasts for a minute or so, <laughs> and then you know you, you've been somewhere. But you didn't know that. And if you were not kicked, awakened by your husband or son or whatever noise at that time, you would not know that you were in the light. Understand? Yes. Okay. And sometimes you wake up, oh, it's not only in the light, but you wake up feeling the vibration of the Kuan Yin is still there as if you have descended from somewhere. Or sometimes you feel you're dropped, you know, <laughs> quickly, yes, and just you awake like that. This is the inner vision and the inner experiences that the mind could not always record it for you. Hmm? Or the mind did record, but then when you wake up, you're busy, okay? You don't think about spiritual thing anymore. You have to do a thousand things in the house and see thousands of people outside the house and your business and your kids and your husband, your mother, your mother-in-law, blah, blah, blah. Everybody demand your attention that you cannot even have time to enjoy what is recorded, okay? Just like you have a CD in the house, but you don't have time to play, then you cannot hear the songs, right? But nevertheless, if you see your life always improving, your love more expanded, your happiness is, is, is always, you know, greater and greater every day, that is spiritual fruit, okay? Then you know for sure that every night you travel with the master into a higher dimension, whether you remember or not. Or else, how does your personality change? How does your love grow like that? How does your wisdom even expand day by day, right? Okay. The times when you see is the time your brain, your, uh, your attention is awake. That's when you see it. And the time you don't see, it means you are deep in sleep or samadhi, and when you come back, you don't remember. So even if you see now and again, know for sure that you see every day, okay? Even sometimes during sleep. Most of the time you see vision and you go into higher dimension with the master during sleep, as I have just mentioned. Because uh, during the day, even though you try to meditate, you sleep half of the time or two-thirds of it, or you think, an, uh, you think of another one-third about every other thing except the Master or God or the Holy Names. And that's why even during meditations, most, many of us, not most, many of us do not think they see the light, even though the light came. Or sometimes just a few seconds, yeah? You shook up like electric currents go through your body and then it's gone because your attention is not 100% concentrated, yeah? But then during the night when you sleep, your mind, your active brain is restful, and then the master can help you to take you out quicker, yeah? Okay. Nobody has no vision. Everybody has, believe me, okay? Yeah. I have another question related to the brain. Yeah. Is it possible that I'm a university student? Is it possible that all the information that I gather in my studies interferes with spiritual practice? And sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. It's too much a develop of the intellectual power. Uh, sometimes take, a, I'll say, take a toy <laughs> on spiritual development. But that doesn't mean you cannot go, okay? You will have more benefit in the night when you sleep, more than when you meditate, 
Yes, but I have told you many times, the sure sign of spiritual progress is that your life changed every day. You experience miracle, yeah? You experience help in time of trouble, yeah? In time of emergency, you feel somebody's there. Somebody actually sees the Master is there, somebody feels the Master is there. Nevertheless, the Master is there. Or your life always changed for better and better and better. Yeah, you're more loving, more tolerant, more wiser. Yeah, more understanding. That's a sure sign of spiritual progress. That's a sure sign that you see the light somewhere in the sleep, <laughs> or when you are in samadhi. When you come back, you forget. Hmm? After all, if you see the light in heaven, you go see the Father in heaven, and you come back still a lousy person. Who wants that? See? So even if we forget the vision, but we have changed for a better life, that is, that is uh, the benefit. Huh? That's what we want. Yeah? yeah, we become a saint while living. Yeah, while stay alive, we can be a saintly person, so that's good. Hmm. Some more question? Yeah, okay. Master, um, last conference, Master mentioned that Initiations can cost Master a lot physically, mentally, and spiritually. And after the conference in April, we heard that there were to be no more initiations for a while. So we're wondering, could something serious have happened to Master that you needed to hold initiations? And is Master okay? Yeah, I almost died the other day. Huh? <laughs> And other things happen. Uh, it's not only that, but uh, I was thinking the people who are initiated, the, the old initiated, really should really consider their status, their luck, and to be serious uh, practitioners, more wholesome, more saintly, more selfless. Not just go out and distribute charity to the disaster people the way I told them to or instructed them to, but have to be inside really compassionate and holy and noble. It's not just always asking for blessing from heaven or from the Master and initiate and then please uh, heal me this, uh, please uh, uh, marry my daughter, please uh, <laughs> find my ugly son uh, a wife, nothing like that. Or using my photo for healing people and all that kind of thing. I was really uh, thinking this group of people has to be more noble, has to think of a higher purpose, like want to know God, want to know yourself, want to become a saint, to benefit others, not just thinking of benefit yourself, especially material things, or like wanting to have my socks or my hat or for blessing power or whatever it is. I really feel very uh, discouraged by that. So I was needing a little bit of time to digest all that too. And I just want them to reconsider also during that time that uh, maybe they should better be more serious, okay? More wholesome. Yes, yeah. yes, the new one and the old one alike. The question is, um, I just realized one thing, so when uh, every time when living in the world, every minute, but you, as you said, is a school. So every second or every minute is studying, even your sleep. Is, is that correct? I, I asked That's the inner, question? Yeah, I asked the inner master and the answer is yes. Yeah, sure. Not really a school, it's just the, mm, the thing you should know, the thing you should remember. All the things you, you, the thing you learn is all the things you already knew. Just now you begin to remember. And every minute, every second you remember more about oh. yourself or anything that's useful or not useful from your past inner wisdom, yeah? And then, of course, you can okay. say that's cool, but actually you know everything already. Right. Everything I said to you, everything you ask me, everything I answer, you already knew. Just either you wanted to remain uh, ignorant for fun, or, or you just don't realize that you know. Mm. That's why you have to dig inside your wisdom and understand it, yeah? I don't really need to say anything to you. By some time, by meditating together alone, 
with me or with fellow initiates and thinking of the Master, you will also know the answer. Just sometimes you are impatient or sometimes you are too busy outside, yeah, and you get a confused message inside and you don't know whether it's true or not. Yeah. But everything that you asked me, you already knew. Or at least the Master answered you inside right away. If we calm down, we know everything. So it's not, it's not uh, you can say it's a school, but we don't have anything else to learn anymore, actually. We already knew everything. We, we are Buddha, yeah? We have forgotten. So the moment we get enlightened, we begin to remember. So every second, every time, of course you remember more, that's a kind of school too, yeah? You know how to react with a certain situation and you know how to deal with certain problems. These are not because you learn, but because you really remember. Thank you. Yeah. Nobody can teach a Buddha. Hmm? Hmm. Can awaken a Buddha, but not to teach a Buddha. Everything you ask me here is just for the brain, just to amuse yourself and just to clear your brain of some problem. <laughs> Otherwise, you know everything inside. Everything you need to know, you have. Every, every talent you need for fun, you have. Yeah. Everything you know already, just to remember. And the Kuan Yin and the Kuan Kuang, the light and the sound, will help you to remember, to remember, because that's your real self. The light and the sound is your real self. Hmm? The more you remember your real self, the more you know everything that you knew before. See what I mean? So everything you don't know is because of the brain obstructed you. Every wrong information, every wrong reaction you do is because of the brain. It distorted the information from your own wisdom. And every time, every period of time, every situation, there are always people like this, beings like this, very highly evolved, very noble souls who came down to the physical, dimension like us, like ours, in order to lead us back into the nobility of the heavenly kingdom, to drag us out of this uh, density of matters which is created by ourselves for some purposes. But sometimes we created it <laughs> and it became too much for us. It's a uh, function further and stronger and more powerful than we expected, and we're out of control. And these be beings like masters, messengers, ma uh, messiah, must come down and help us out of the maya that we have created, of the, 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 the web that we have entangled within. Mm. Most of beings who come down here, try to come back to the kingdom of God. And that's the purpose of all souls. That's why they came here. They came here in the no-God kind of uh, dimension in order to recognize God so that they can compare yeah? uh, what is a God state and what is no God state or less God state. But when they come here, it's too much. The soul is not used to it all this density all this suffering, all this heavy and uh, dragging matter around them. So the soul is a little bit lost, say, Wow, what I do now? What I do now? So the soul, when comes here, huh? <laughs> every soul, every soul, every individual spark of uh, the Divine come here for the only purpose to go back to the kingdom of God. The only purpose to come here is to recognize the other part. The only reason we came to the negative region, region is to recognize the positive abode that we have left. We have to leave it in order to recognize it. That's a problem. Sometimes we don't uh, recognize our family happiness and then we wander around outside the house like teenagers, you know, they left home and they come outside and then they're subjected to drug dealers and to all kinds of prostitution and homeless and cold and hunger and, and, and bad treatment from the people outside, then they recognize their home is better. Home sweet home is always better. You remember Alice in Wonderland? 
Yeah, she wandered around. Yeah, she wished to be away from home. She disappeared from home. Which she's bored and she didn't like it. But after a while, she, she wants to come home. So all she had to say is just home, sweet home. Sweet is my home. Then she's back there again. That's the moment of realization. It's a, a children's story, but it is the journey of the soul. It's very similar to the journey of the soul. So, even though we come here, we will have uh, some assignment, like someone do this, someone do that, and then we have to do some work. But these are nothing. These are not the real purpose of us to come here. But since we come here, everybody must do something. And that's a play. That's a game. So whether you help people or you help yourself or you married or you're not married, it's your own choose, chosen path to go. It's not that you're married and you're not better than the other married people or the the the, the you know the um, I say the, the the bachelor are better than the married people. It's not that so. Just the way you have chosen to walk in order to recognize yourself again. So like uh, people uh, uh, say that you have to keep the commandments, yeah, the precepts, in order to go to heaven or to go to Buddhahood. I say it's not true. Not even the vegetarian diet will keep you, we will, will uh, say send you to heaven. It's not a must. It's not an obligation. It is a signal that when you keep all these commandments, when you live according to these commandments, you have found the way home. You are on the right path. You already evolved, developed enough to come back to the kingdom of God and reclaim your own glory again. Just a sign. Just a sign. That's a, ah, just like if you, uh, you graduate in college, eh? you have some diploma. Eh? The diploma is not for you. It's not an obligation for you to have but you should have it, <laughs> since you are graduating. You just do it easily. Huh? You pass the exam easily, and you got the diploma easily. Nobody forced you to have it, and even if you don't have it, it's okay. Just that means you are not graduated. So anyone within their heart, if they found themselves very uh, indifferent to the worldly success or failure, to the fame and name of the world, to the passion and love of human relationship to everything that is important to human survival. If anyone is ignorant, I mean diff indifferent to all this, then they must know that they have evolved very, very far. You understand? So the, the commandments or the uh, uh, precepts are not for me, forced upon you. So don't complain to me, it's too much or anything like that. It is for, even for you, you should realize again that the five precepts or the Ten Commandments, even in that matter, are not an obligation from God to tell you that you must keep it or you go to hell. It's not that. You choose what you want to be. You do what you want to do. You do what you passionately want to do, because that's the only thing you must do while you are here. But remember, the real purpose, the main point in this game is to recognize who you are again, who you really are, not who you are at this moment, but to recognize the real purity, glory of the soul, of your true self, before you descend into this world. And must know that the only purpose for you to come here is to recognize the other side. Because without this negative and suffering and dark world, you cannot recognize the light that you are. Nothing to compare. And so that's why. It sounds ridiculous to me too. <laughs> but that's the way it is. Huh? And that's the trouble with us. Huh? So do what you do. Huh? Do whatever you like to do to make your life more enchanting. More endurable, more endure, more yes, yes, more bearable while you are here, huh? Because since you are here, you might just well be here, huh? And do what you do, what you like to do, because if 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 you have 
just been given just a short period like this, 100 years or 80 years or 60 years, and you couldn't even enjoy anything you want to do, then it, what is the, you know, what? <laughs> What's the heaven, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. So, do what you want to do. Hmm? Just, you must have a choice, huh? whether you want to be this kind of person or be that kind of person. Huh? And enjoy yourself. Enjoy whatever you think is the most noble, uh, your heart most desire. Because if you still desire it, then just let it be. If you don't desire it, that means, okay, that don't interest you. Hmm? And if you come here and you, you already know the truth and the way of awakening and the purpose of this life, and you don't share it with other people, you also feel bad. And that also nagging in your soul, and also a kind of nuisance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, you get sick, you feel sick, you feel bored, and you feel itchy. <laughs> yeah? And then you scratch here and scratch here, and also don't look good either. <laughs> and then finally you say, okay, okay, let's just, you know, get out and do it. Because the, all the soul has this purpose in mind. Either he's already realized souls, or he just realized soul, or on the way to realization. They all have this duty to rekindle the memories of the other brothers and sisters about their purpose of coming back to the kingdom of God. Because that's the only purpose that why we come here. How paradoxical it seems to you, <laughs> it still is. It's still the only sole purpose of wanting to recognize the light, so come into the darkness. The only purpose of coming to the darkness in this universe is just to recognize the light that we have. That's why we create this body by our own power of creativity to, to, to condense the matter together, become one piece like this. From all billions of, 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 of units of energy, of different kind of intelligence and uh, abilities to condense together, make it become a body like this, all concentrated, so that we had all the information, all the tools, all the abilities that we need in order to recognize ourselves. So <laughs> everything boiled down to this. You come here so that you can go back. Isn't that stupid? <laughs> Sounds stupid, but that's the only thing to do here and there or anywhere. Because we have been in heaven so long and we have everything we wanted. So we want to know what it is like about what we are having now and what we really are now. What is it? You know? What does it mean, heaven? Huh? So you have to go down to hell to get it. <laughs> to say, oh, go, go, go. no, 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 not this one. <laughs> now I know it. And okay, get, get, get me back quickly. <laughs> Oh, that's what it is. Huh? But it sounds very paradoxical. But otherwise, can you imagine what else to do in the universe, except coming up and down the ladder and play fool and then go back and recognize yourself and come down and, <laughs> and suffer and come back again? Huh? Otherwise, no creation exists. Nothing going on in the universe, not even the moon, the stars, the heavenly bodies, the firmaments, the earth, the planets, all these galaxies, nothing ever come into being if we do not steer in our super-consciousness the idea of wanting to know ourselves, that nothing came into being and nothing necessarily exists at all. But so it is, as it is, that we have created, that we wanted to know, that we wanted to create, so that it has abundant, so that it became the universe, so that all things run according to our plan and our wish, so that we know that we have such tremendous power, that we create all this, and that we can even 
I will say withhold and withdraw all this and go back to nothingness, go back to the bliss that it is, and nothing more. And that is the time for the end of the creation, when all the minds, all the consciousness take a rest. That is the seventh day of God creation. That is the day when all things come back to nothing. All things come back to where it belongs and be recreated again. <laughs>